Hey, welcome back to the pod. Today we're going to talk about the NBA draft coming up. Big deal for the Blazers, big deal for Blazer fans. Trying to pick that next superstar of the future. I know we've talked a lot about the Blazers needing size. That has been the hot topic of conversation. But I just wanted to throw this scenario out here. See what your guys' reaction to this is. Because I think the most important three inches pause of a player's height is between 6'3 and 6'6, maybe 6'2 and 6'5, right in there, especially for guards. When you start to get to 6'5, 6'6 as a guard, that's enough size. Let's take a look at the Pacers. They got two point guards in their starting lineup. Nimhard is 6'4, solid defender, and Halliburton, 6'5, seems solid on defense. Obviously, their primary playmaker. And then Naismith is like 6'7, six, 6'8. Six, I was going to look this up, but I forgot. Um, and I was wondering if in the draft, if the pick falls just right to the Blazers, would it be an option to take? Stefan Castle with that pick. He's a 6-6 combo guard to pair with Scoot in the backcourt. Kind of have those two, you know, pretty big guards. Scoot's like 6-3, but he's athletic and huge. Let's let's give him an extra inch for that. He's 6-4. You got a 6-6 playmaking type guard. Actually, you got two playmakers out there. And then Shaden would slot in to that three spot. So you're kind of playing the you're kind of flirting with the three guard lineup again, but it's not two six two players out there. You got like a and that can't play defense is the other huge caveat here. Um, Castle seems like a pretty solid defender, uh, tall and long. Scoot obviously seems like he could hang his hat on the defensive end going forward. Um, got a lot of speed long arms seems like he can play pretty good defense and then Shaden also like 6'6 athletic so if that you know if the Blazers drop a few spots maybe and kind of end end up in that like six to eight range and he's sitting there and there's not a wing you really like on the board is that a is that a kind of a lineup that you guys would be satisfied with or does it have to be that you know six eight six nine six ten wing any responses, anybody? I mean, yes. I think the main goal is size. I'm still a best player available guy. Um, I just think that the, the players are so in one tier to, to from an outsider perspective. So there's nobody that's standing out. So if they're all even prospects wise, and if the board falls where there's just a wing available and you, you know, they're all about even, I would just go for the wing, but if, you know, the, the guys that are the scouts that are watching ball every time see a look at, you know, Castle, like you said, for example, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would prefer to take a guy 6'6 six, six or shorter with the second pick that the Blazers most likely will end up having. Uh, you know, if there's a guy there sitting at four, pick number 14, that's in that size range, that's a projects to be a good defender. I would be more comfortable taking a, a guy like that there. But if the Blazers pick, first pick falls to, you know, six or something and castle sitting there he's supposed to be a good defender and like you said at six six the problem comes where he's another guy that's if he develops his shot so then you got scoot if he develops his shot which his shot was better actually one of the biggest surprises positively for scoot um going forward in his rookie year his three-point shot specifically it was supposed to be worse than it was um and then castle He's a, like I said, he's another guy if he develops a shot. So you don't want to have a backcourt of guys that can't shoot. So if you're slotting him in at the two guard, you got to have a shooter out there. Shaden, you know, if he's playing at six, 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 seven at the wing, he's a good, he's a good shooter. Right. But that's kind of where I stand on it. I would like a shooter at, at six, six, you know, you can, you can run two guys that are six, 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 seven at the two, three to answer your question. 
I think we got to take a wing. I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I'm going to stand firm on that. I think we have to try as best we can to find a wing to take. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is just that we have such a backlog, such a log jam of guards right now. And one thing that we talk about a lot on this podcast is I feel like we kind of talk like Anthony is, is out the door or like his, him being traded is kind of a foregone conclusion Apparently that is not what the front office is thinking. There are like long-term Anfernee's our guy. And I mean, if we're looking at Scoot, Anfernee and Shaden, and then also potentially drafting another, you know, starter level guard, even if he's a big one, I mean, I just don't know who's going to come off the bench there. And then if Anthony does go and then we draft a guard who also isn't a major scorer, then I still have the same concerns about who's going to get our points um because you know it doesn't seem like jeremy's able to do it all on his own who knows if he's going to stick around if he doesn't stick around then we really need to get a wing with some size i so, think with, if you were going to go the castle route you would assume that scoot and shaden would be taking the majority of the offense and playmaking and he would be more of a nimhard type role as a defender and hopefully a solid ball handler that's basically just looking at that Pacers lineup. It is interesting how they have two point guards out there and it seems to work pretty well to uh, defense, you know, two guys who can hold their own on defense, play make, and maybe importantly there is hit the shot too, which we need to see Scoot in particular be able to prove that he can hit the three consistently. He did pretty good when we went there, when we were there. Maybe we just need to go to every game. You're his well, good luck charm. I have a, a question for you guys. So the Warriors currently, it's current the pick is currently slotted into the Blazers. Okay. Sitting at pick number 14, it's got 3.1% chance, I believe, to move up to the top four. If the pick that the Warriors have happens to move up into the top four, at first you're thinking ultimate face palm. Okay. But it's next year protected only top one. And next year's draft, I know we don't always like think about next year's draft, but it, and remember, it's the Warriors pick, not the Blazers, right? So it doesn't have any control over how the Blazers do next year. If the Warriors leap into the top and they get their pick this year, the Blazers have their pick and it's only top one protected. There's guys like Cooper out there, Cooper Flag, Capture the Flag, who, you know, the Blazers are probably going to be in position to take. He is a... He is a do-it-all wing. He's supposed to project it as a star wing, and he's been that way his whole – he's been known kind of as that known hype prospect coming up. There's another guy, Ace Bailey. He's coming up. He's supposed to be this big deal wing, right? Like it's looking like a lot of the wing – a lot of the talent in the next year's draft at the top is centralized in that wing position. If the Warriors pick gets moved up into the top, how are you guys going to feel – I know it's not instant gratification. How are you guys going to feel if that happens and the Blazers get one pick this year? I'm going to feel terrible because I have no faith that the Warriors are going to be bad next year. They still have Stephen Curry on their team. They still have Steve old. Kerr coaching their team. I think they're, they're going to retool. I watched an interview with Steph a few days ago as he won Clutch Player of the Year. And just watching him interview and his faith and confidence and his own skills and his team's ability to reach. I mean, they just have a proven track record. This is the first time in, in like his entire career or whatever that they haven't made the playoffs. And they played in all these close games that if they had, you know, maybe one or two other pieces, it would have pushed them over the top on these games. They could, they were like, they played in like 40 some clutch games they could have they could easily had 50 wins this year. Obviously, they didn't. They didn't have enough to get over the top. But things change next year. I could see them being right back in the competition. They're obviously, you know, they're not rebuilding anytime soon with Steph on their team. They still are in win it all now mode. So I think that if the Blazers get one of those elite wings, it's gonna be with their own pick, unfortunately, after another year of tanking. Uh, I think you're I think you're right on the money with that. I do not think that the Warriors are going to have as bad of a year next year. This is our shot. This is our only chance to get a good pick out of the Warriors. 
I mean, who knows? It's hard to say. Maybe next year they'll have trouble again. But yeah, I just I don't think that they're gonna be you know a top ten pick next year. So I just wouldn't take that bet. It's so yeah. risky. Like I that would that would suck. I think that would be a terrible feeling to like give the Warriors another chance to retool and get get back into the playoffs. I just disagree. I think that the Warriors' time is done. We we went out here when the Warriors lost big this season and declared them done. Their dynasty done over. And over the playoffs, what did we see? Clank Thompson, or the play-in. Clank Thompson made an appearance every time, you know, in the big moments at this point in his career. Draymond Green, Clay Thompson is up for a contract, right? An extension. That could have been his last game as a Warrior. Do you think that the Warriors front office is going to reward all of Clay's loyalty by just letting him walk? Maybe. Are the fans going to be pissed if they do that? Maybe. So are they going to chase Clay Thompson to get him to make him give him the money he thinks he's owed? I think they will. I think they're going to lock themselves in to Clay Thompson because he's a, he's been a warrior for life, part of their dynasty. Just like we Is saw with guys like Kobe. More than he was making this year, though. Or do you think? I think he wants that. I think he wants the lifetime. I'm a I'm your boy. Money, right? Draymond. Who knows? Is he going to miss half the season because he's suspended again? Like every season is turning into. As his game deteriorates, is he going to lash out more? Steph, is he going to be healthy a whole season, putting the team on his back? Wiggins, what the heck is he now? Nobody knows. So I'm okay. I mean, listen, instant gratification is always nice. But if the pick happens at that 3% chance to go to the Warriors, it might not be the end of the world. The Blazers could be sitting there at the top of the board with their own pick, and the Warriors could be toiling which is what I think is going to happen. Also, if they, get they... A, if they get a top four pick, then that player could help push them over the top too. It I don't even, I mean, that could be the Clay Thompson replacement potentially coming on their team. Uh, I don't think. Or if they, if they added a player like Sar or someone like that to their team, like that could really change that. They were in like 40 some clutch games this year. All I'm saying, like they could, they could regress. They could have been worse. worse. Or they could get just a little bit better and win 10 more games, and then the Blazers are looking at a mid-20s pick next year. They're another year older. Another I don't like that. Gray beard. I have a little bit of a prediction. I think that when the Warriors retool this offseason, I think Clay's actually going to take a team-friendly deal because I think he's going to be okay. It's, I think he's mature enough at this point in his career that he wants to, he understands he's not who he used to be. He's said it many times. I think maybe it might be a relief for him to take some of that pressure off to be more of a bench guy and to let them go out and get somebody else to be Steph's number two. And maybe Dr- that means Draymond goes. Maybe it means he's out because I think maybe the they're a little bit tired of the antics and also his production just isn't what it used to be. Uh, and if they can get some value for him and, you know, Clay is willing to take a team friendly deal, they could be really, they could build again around Steph really fast. If it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen in the Bay. It really um, doesn't seem like he's lost a step at the very least. Like Steph seems like Steph still. And if you just get some competent players around him, he's going to be able to wreck games and they're going to be able to win. Like, uh, yeah, I just don't love that deal. The most important thing for the Warriors, though, is get Chris Paul off your team. A S A P. Yeah. The architect of their dynasty is gone. Steph is older. Everybody's old. I don't have faith that they're going to be able to turn it around. And I think Clay is going to want money. I don't think he's going to want to come off the bench. I don't think he's even said he knows he's not what he used to be. I don't know. Remember him hearing him say that multiple times. I think he thinks he's the number one, number two guy still. So I would That's like That's not to- really the impression I got from hearing interviews with them. I think he was kind of realizing that he wasn't really living up to the billing and he probably does have to take a step back. But players like him don't grow on trees, so they're going to have to find somebody to fill that role with limited assets. I don't know who they would be able to get for Draymond. Um, exactly. But – they just weren't that far off. I don't think they were as far off as it looked like on paper this last year. I think that that's what Steph said in his interview that kind of rung true with me is they were in at like every game. They weren't getting killed in these games. These were close games. 
that were just a play or two, you know, five points here or there. That was the same thing in the play-in. They were within, you know, a couple of points within the last few minutes. And I think they're definitely a different team in the playoffs too once they get into series mode and Steph Curry starts ramping it up as the series goes on and starts getting 50-point triple-doubles in game seven and whatnot. So I just, yeah, it's a... Uh, I mean, I just hope we get to pick. I'll just give just give me like a give me an eight or a nine. That would be beautiful. An eight or a nine overall pick, even up into the eleven or twelve. Well, they're gonna their pick is give 14. it to me now. Their pick is fourteen locked. So it's either fourteen or we lose it. Oh so, really? Yeah. So we either okay. get pick fourteen or it's moved to next year. It's like the uh 3%. it's like the time value of money or whatever. Just give me the money now. I don't want the money in nope. the future. Invest invest hold the line yeah give me the money give, no. give me the Diamond hands give me the pick so i can invest it no and grow let, a play let it go in the market and we'll see get that number two pick you're giving you're giving your asset up pick. for somebody else to grow the the value in it yep i don't like i don't like That's it cold i don't is. like it what do you guys I'm think let it. us know in the comments down below what you would do in that scenario if you're interested in Stefan Castle, all that shit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.